Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365. Today's episode will be covering the updates from January 2024 from Microsoft. If you follow along in the past, you know I focus in on what's relevant to the MSP space, blocking out the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come from Microsoft each month. Got a lot of cool announcements today related to Copilot, related to Teams, so definitely stay tuned. And as always, I do link a blog post down below that supplements this video with all helpful links, articles, things like that, so you can get more information about each announcement. And then lastly, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to the channel, I'll do these every month so you can get the updates from Microsoft in a quickly condensed video. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, getting into it here, fundamental knowledge I would feel like, but just wanted to call it out again here. Biggest announcement this past month is Copilot going generally available, no seat minimums, becoming part of CSP as well. Now there are some prerequisites that you can see listed here. You'd have to be on a minimum of business standard if you're in the SMB space. But definitely a lot of hype around this right now. Um, the only other call out here is that it is a prepaid annual upfront cost, $30 a user a month, but you have to pay $360 a user um, just to get kicked off here. So it's still going to be a barrier to entry in my opinion for SMB. The chart down below here shows also some Copilot offerings they came out with for individuals called Copilot Pro. And I'll be getting into the more of that license disbursement in a future video. But I do have videos out right now related to my experience with Copilot. I've been using it for two to three months now, um, as well as a video on the security and data privacy concerns that you should have with Copilot. So we think a lot of us are gonna slow roll this into our organization, which we should, to make sure that our data privacy is under control, data governance policies are in place. But definitely a lot of hype around this like right now, and I'll be coming out with more and more videos about Copilot just to get more immersive experience, but also really to highlight uh, that security and data privacy piece as well. Piggybacking off that, in Microsoft 365 Lighthouse, as part of the sales advisor module within Lighthouse, they have a new Copilot sales tool, which is showing you higher propensity for customers uh, based off their activity within their account. I think the other cool thing out of the box here is that they're gonna be showing you upcoming renewals as well too for your NCE subscriptions across your customers within that 90 day window to get ahead of those conversations that you need to start having about re-upping onto another annual contract or whatever that might be. Some of you may not even know what Sales Advisor is or even M365 Lighthouse. Uh, we definitely check this out though, it's GA today. You can go in there and start to see what kind of recommendations they're showing for your customer base. And the last one here related to Copilot is this Copilot dashboard that they're incorporating if you have Viva Insights licensing as well too. So they're deprecating a previous Power BI report around this and moving it into Viva Insights. But as you can see in the screenshot, it's really looking at all the adoption metrics within your company as far as it relates to the interactions with Copilot. I think they're really trying to drive home the ROI uh, of this tool as well, especially in SMB where it's a higher price point for us to swallow. Uh, but this is gonna be coming out in early February. I have a link in my blog post how to get access to this. Um, and then it'll expand into a general availability mid-February. I think reporting on this is gonna be very important as we move forward with Copilot. And extending into that reporting, I think this top one here, the search, um, asking about the what types of questions are people asking um, in Microsoft 365 Copilot chat. I think that's gonna be very important to understand uh, not only what, what are users asking, whether there's any malicious activity going on, insider threat, talked about that in my security video, definitely something you would wanna monitor as well as the employee sentiment. They're gonna be sending out surveys. If the employees fill them out, you'll be able to see more of the sentiment about the return on investment with Copilot as well. Shifting into Microsoft Teams here, this first feature I think is pretty cool. Previous to this, only the meeting organizer could add notes prior, during, and after the meeting as well um, to the meeting invite. Now every member of the meeting invite will be able to do so as well too. I think it's just gonna make for more productive meetings in the sense of the agenda item talking points, any type of read-only things that you want to preface before we get into the meeting to make the meeting most effective, and then the follow-up task after the meeting's completed. So this will happen mid-February, be complete by late February. This feature here, this mute on air, was something that was available in the legacy Teams client. New Teams client does not have supportability yet, but this is coming. If you use this as using the native microphone icon in your bottom right corner of your Windows device, and this will mute your Teams meeting or your phone if you're on, the, on the, another line there as well too. And that's all related to the taskbar. So this will come out early March and be complete by mid-April. 
This next one here is if you leverage webinars. We don't personally in our organization, but many people do. And this is giving you the ability, let's say you had consecutive meetings or a webinar that is extending into a series without having to necessarily create a new webinar uh, for each one of those with the same participants, you can now just duplicate the event and it'll capture the participants that are already part of that meeting as a template. And you can just speed up your time in which you uh, make that series within your organization or if it's an external facing webinar, things like that. This will happen early March, be complete by late March. Next one here I think is a good security win for blocking users joining externally to a Teams hosted meetings. Previously, it's kind of black and white in that you can block anonymous user access from entry into the meeting or automatic admittance into the meeting. This is extending that now to what we would normally see within our Active Directory environment as well, where we have maybe trusted organizations, trusted domains, things like that, that we've whitelisted or we have a B2B collaboration with, and that's extending those settings into those features to get really granular on who you let uh, join the meeting uh, that's external to your environment. The list of all those settings is in my blog post. I'm not gonna get into it it's too much in depth for this video, but definitely check that out. I think it's a great security win to get granular in that area. This will happen early February, be complete by late March. Next one here is private and shared channel links. Previously, this feature was only available for public channels within your environment. But once this is released, you can share links um, to those channels, to other members. Obviously, they still have to be part because they're isolated um, and restricted. They still have to be part of them, but it could be a good way to say, hey, we've added to you to this share channel. Here's a link to access it without making them search um, within their team's environment. Just ease of use for the user. This will happen mid-February and be complete by late February. This next feature here was previously only available in Outlook on the web or the Outlook client, but it's giving you the ability, as you can see within the screenshot, in that middle column next to the attendee to say what time zone are they in, um, to be able to schedule meetings more effectively and understand what working hours somebody has as well too. For us in our organization, we have you know uh, members of the team working across the entire United States in three different time zones, four different time zones. So it's really important for us uh, to have this ability and have it integrated within Teams. This will happen early February, be complete by late April. Another security win here, sensitivity labels is coming into the Teams mobile meetings as well. This is information protection labeling as a feature set, comes part of business premium if you're not familiar with that. But sensitivity labels allow you to restrict certain settings or shareability capabilities uh, within Teams. So let's say you apply a confidential label to a meeting, you may not be able to share the meeting recording with anybody outside of that meeting. As a clear example, you might be able to encrypt that meeting, things like that. Um, but now you can see, both see the actual label on the meeting um, as part of the mobile experience. And when you're generating a new meeting on the mobile experience, you're able to apply a label where you weren't previously. So this will happen late February, be complete by early March. And then this next one here, I'm a little mixed feels about because I already feel alert or notification fatigue within Teams myself. But this is saying that whenever you have a net new meeting created or if it's canceled or if it's rescheduled, you're going to get an activity feed notification within Teams about that just so you have that. I get it already um, you know, via Outlook and Toast notifications on my desktop. So this would be a little bit redundant. You can turn this off. Settings for how to do that will be in my blog in case you want to see that. But this will happen mid-February, be complete by late February. This next one here is a nice to have. I think it's just something just to update here. Convenient to share contact information. So as you can see in the screenshot, if you at mention somebody, you'll now have this um, additional setting that says share someone's contact information. Then it'll share it as a card for them. So you can see everything about them really quickly, such as their phone number, their email, their organizational chart, things like that. Um, and this will happen early February and be complete by mid-February. Shifting into Microsoft Intune, I consider this another security feature. I don't think a lot of people will be affected by this, but I wanted to call it out. Microsoft shifting to have audit logs be retained for only one year. Um, so if you need longer retention logs for your device maintenance and management, um, you will need to go in and export those out. That's their only recommended setting um, to be able to retain them longer for right now. The instructions for how to do so are in my blog, uh, but this will start happening in April of 2024. Next, Microsoft Outlook here. First off, Copilot. I think this will be a really cool feature. Interested to see how it will look. But it's basically, uh, when they say coaching, it's gonna analyze your draft, your email draft, and it's gonna write a short summary of feedback. That could be about your tone, could be about you know how you're presenting sentiment, how clear the message is, and it's gonna provide you some recommendations on how to clean that up. 
which would be really great for people who have poor grammar, who are articulating really poorly in an email to make that a little bit more concise and it can automatically update that. But this will happen in February and be complete by March. Next one here, I think is a long time coming. This is actually available in Outlook on the web today if you've experienced that. But opening up a Word, Excel, or PowerPoint within the client experience today opens that up in the other desktop apps. It's kind of some tenant switching that you have versus a consolidated experience. And what this announcement is saying that you can view these documents within your integrated Outlook experience without having to leave. So it's just a little bit more convenient. Some of us may not like that. I do personally uh, within the Outlook on the web experience. This will be happening late January and be complete by mid-March. Extending off that a little bit, um, in Outlook on the web, you'll now have a OneDrive for Business app, as you can see here in the screenshot in your left-hand nav panel there. So you can open up OneDrive. Again, you don't have the tennis switch. You don't have to open up a new tab to look at Outlook documents, and they may be one you're searching for that you want to share an email. You can do that natively within this experience. So that's another cool feature. It's going to be happening mid-February and be complete by late March. Okay, guys, that's everything I have for you today. Definitely comment below with any questions you have about these new announcements or any features you're most excited about. As always, like and subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.